Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, how are you doing? I feel like I have not been here in such a long time, and my God, it's only a week. So, how are you doing? I want to take this moment and say, Yesterday, I was doing a group session and we were talking about words and word associations. So for me to do my intro every single week that I come live and I say good morning and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays and it's so good to be here with you. It's like a tagline because this tagline has created this beautiful way of me also reminding myself that I am with you as much as you are showing up, you are coming through, and you come and we have a dialogue together. So if you are going to be with us, by all means, if you are here, show me with a hand, say hello. You know, this is this is called energy. This is called how we connect with each other. Although I may not hear you, but if you were to type something, I will know you are here, you are present. And for that, I want to thank you. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Lisa. I'm the expert clinical hypnotherapist that helps you heal within, and that is exactly how transformation begins. When we heal within, when we recognize that there are things within us, within all of us, that needs healing. Hey, Adrian says, I am here. Well, welcome here, Adrian. Thank you for saying yay and being present. As always, one of my biggest supporters. And for that, I thank you. So last night we were talking about word associations. And hypnosis is nothing but word association. And why? Because as a clinical hypnotherapist, I guide my clients, I guide you into that state by communicating with you with words. So words are truly powerful. Words can make you and break you. And if you can just think about uh, another time and a place in your life, you will recognize that from the time you were growing up, even at home growing up, there were words that were spoken, um, either you don't say that, or words that were spoken, or words that were othered um, and shared within the family, uh, either in anger or with love. And that is the words you came to embed within yourself, within your subconscious, and you learned words at home, then at school. So that's why words are so powerful. Here's another thing. I had a client. Hi, Sedajan. Welcome to the platform. So good to see you. I miss talking to you, actually. It's like now we can even meet up. Um, okay. So I had a client who came in here. And I want to share this story so you have an understanding how much words impact. So this client brings her six-year-old child and this kid in the last few months of uh, a year and a half ago right before co-ed when he was in school she started recognizing things about her child that he was becoming a little bit more withdrawn uh, that the grades were not as good well still it's I mean, it's like beginning, it's not very late in school, and yet she was seeing effects of this child. Now, I want you to imagine something. A child that the parents are home and then they go to school and spending a lot of time, this is just a metaphor that I'm going to share. He's in class 
and the teacher for whatever reason does not like him or is or there is another child in there and I'm not I'm just making it a metaphor of it another child that is bullying him so he feels very angry frustrated and starts withdrawing once he starts withdrawing in school either because of a teacher because of another student because of whatever reason he comes home feeling not up to par and yet the parents cannot put their finger on it but here is what happens he starts having physical manifestation by saying I feel sick in my tummy I don't feel good and then the body starts having temperature and when he's having temperature what happens mom is going to take care of him uh, mom is going to keep him in at home and tend to him and that is what's happening and what happens there is there's emotional things that happen and yet it is the body that manifests it the body does the safety of it so it's reaction so the body creates a temperature the body creates pain so all the attention goes on the pain of the child and feeling withdrawn there is my child is sick my child is got temperature got it so far then as this be continues goes to school comes back more withdrawn more manifestation now the mom has to take the child to a doctor so as they start going to the doctor the doctor is checking from one doctor to another doctor and this kid saw four doctors and one psychologist and they could not figure out now this thing starts going round and about for weeks and then months it comes and goes not knowing where the trigger is hmm then they put him on medication thinking that he must not feel good six years old so now we have an emotional thing happening at another place that because the child does not know how to express the body is doing the manifesting uh, the temperature so it's fighting it and all the attention goes here so they go somewhere else you see it do and then go somewhere else and then they find other things that it might be wrong with this child and then give the medication to get rid of the symptoms and yet the symptoms are far deeper than just this but of course we don't know so what happens it is the subconscious mind that once we tapped into the subconscious mind it's amazing how children express and the way it was expressed is I don't like going to class because I don't like sitting in that class because this person is in that class and when this person is in that class I feel agitated I feel angry boom once we start healing and working on that core this kid the symptoms go away the temperature goes away he has no more tummy ache and he feels better and happier why and because once he realized that we empowered empowering this kid to know that he can stand up for himself and he can say I no longer want to be friends with you I do not like you and his version of it not my version but do you realize I just gave you this entire scenario for you to understand there are so much happening internally that we manifest externally 
It's like zits. It's like uh, little bumps on our face. And when we feel agitated, when we feel angry, when we think we have OCD, that we have to do the same thing over and over, over and over, because that becomes one way we find ourselves so focused and so much in control. Yeah? That it's as if, if I can control this, I may be able to control the rest of my life or the rest of whatever else is happening around me. So in a way, this kid had created a whole way of uh, functioning and by doing one thing over and over. And a lot of people thought that he had a, a, a other problems and I will not mention some of the diagnosis because he was doing certain things with it once we tapped into the subconscious and told the subconscious and got his conscious agreement once he understood how he is focusing and how he can shift it and how he controls even his body and he can do the same thing and unravel it and undo it and just sit still so the body does not have to react so that he can be proud of himself even thank his body the way it was protecting him not to go to school not to go to class it was amazing you see, that's exactly how I got into hypnosis. And if you haven't heard my story, I developed ovarian cyst uh, twice when I was married. And I had two surgeries. And it was the third time that I was already um, in the midst of my divorce and working at the law firm. Years later, the divorce was already... Actually, the divorce was final. And... Um, and I was working at the law firm under a lot of stress, a lot of stress. Um, it was my body creating it again for its own reason. So it truly broke me down. I had carpal tunnel, I had knee, watering my knee and being a dancer, I could not dance and so much. I was angry, I was upset. And yet, it was all internal, how I was suppressing so much of what I could not deal with internally, and the body reacted, the body took care of it, but body gave me a time out, it broke me down, and because of that, and because of finding that expert hypnotherapist then, 25 years ago, I broke through my own self-limiting belief and how my body was doing it. And it was by evoking it, understanding it, and then embracing my body and thanking it that I could evolve to the next level. Now, here's the thing. So many ask me if... Um, if uh, hypnosis can help with OCD. So during a hypnotic state, there is a narrowing down of your focus. This is what I wanted to talk to you about. When we focus of your attention uh, on a given trigger, so it's not like a lot of people say, why do I have to go there? Why do I have to deal with the pain or the trauma? I really, I don't want to, go all the way there. I don't want to go to my childhood. I don't want to relive that trauma. We are not reliving the trauma. We are recalling it, remembering it. So once we go to find the trigger, you are not living it. You may feel, you may be in the moment, but it is not happening at the same time. You cannot feel the same thing. The body may feel as if it is real, but then it is the expert hypnotherapist 
that when I say you are safe you are just seeing it it's like you know it's like a drone you're hovering above when that action took place when you heard that word when you had that feeling and when either your mind and body decided to whatever so it's like me saying do you remember the house you grew up in the door to your house do you remember the family car do you remember your uh, neighborhood kids that you may have gone and played with or saw and waved once a time once in a while once you remember you realize it's just a part of your memory because the subconscious mind has absolutely no emotion connected to it so when we talk about the neuroplasticity neural science and the subconscious mind it's just a storage it's just like you writing this love letter right and you pour your heart and you're crying and you're doing everything you write it and you put it on that piece of paper or on the computer or on a lap on a piece of paper or on a card and guess what while you're feeling all that while you are going through all that emotion that piece of paper that thank you card or that the sheet that you are typing on has absolutely no feelings that's the best way I can explain it okay so what we do once we evoke and we go to that place of feeling of time disappearing and during the hours or during the time that it was happening understanding that it's not happening and I am just observing it so I understand it because now as an adult I am more in control of it and even the six-year-old we made him more in control because when that I mean he was seven and a half that he came to me and it was six when it happened so that six-year-old kid now you're more of an adult and you can handle it once that acknowledgement happens the subconscious mind says okay here I just revealed it and then the conscious mind says okay now let's go and shift edit and make a change so in a way that OCD I even wrote it that OCD I like to call it overly controlled order so I do this as long as I am doing this I am in full control as long as I'm doing this my attention is over here and it becomes a habit so next thing you know years later I'm still chewing my nails I am doing this I am poking myself I'm hurting myself why because some kind of a wound has not been healed or a habit has not been changed to a more positive way we all have habits we all have something we hang on to that's our comfort zone so I hope this makes sense Becky good uh, good times hi Becky dear um, do you happen to have a question actually I'm open for any question any questions I hope this makes sense so that's how we shift behaviors and habits through the subconscious and once that is taken and accepted then we move along so there is no more physical symptoms unless there is something really wrong or off that's why we can heal and work with OCDs or behaviors that may feel as if it's impossible to change realize 
that nothing is impossible. And you have the power to make that change. Right? So always, always remember everything is a choice. Staying in that comfort zone is a choice. A mindset, sticking to that mindset is a choice. Becoming successful is a choice. And did you know that there are more people afraid of success than they are afraid of failure? Because once they let go of that, what they thought, the way they can control and manage things, they think if I don't have this and I am free, what do I hang on to? What can I do if that is not there because that's one behavior or one habit that I took it and it's become my safety zone, my buddy system. And we've talked about that many times. So in order for you to make a change within yourself and do it in the comfort of your home or your safety place, think of one thing. Think of one thing that has been bothering you or is no longer enhancing your life. And just write it on a piece of paper. As a matter of fact, another thing you can do, which is one of the most profound ways of therapy, unless you come to me, of course, is um, take a piece of paper, and you cannot do this by typing. And if you are right-handed, take the pen in your left hand and start writing it's going to be awkward in the beginning and start writing I am and complete the sentence I feel complete the sentence I need complete the sentence I can complete the sentence so I am I feel I can I choose to I want those are all I am's and then you come to complete what you feel what you think what you want what you can right those are the power words to recognize what's inside because when you shift going from your dominant to the creative side even though it's awkward, even though it may not look legible at first, but you know what you wrote. Once you start writing that, that's incredible how your subconscious mind will start having a dialogue with you and respond. You get to know more about yourself by tapping within the other side of you and remember some call it the dark side that I don't want to go to there is no dark side when you shed a light I hope today's message and the technique I just gave you was beneficial and remember OCD is nothing but overly directive way of focusing on something that puts you in that comfort zone, right? Because when you check everything 10 times, or if you know someone who has an OCD in cleaning or with the windows and everything, there is nothing wrong with them. It's just that they did it for so many times and for so long, right? That that became their new habit. So um, I don't see any questions. 
Thank you so much for being here, for being present. This is Lisa. And uh, by all means, if you would like to experience one of my hypnotic uh, audios, uh, just text RELAX to 818-221-2797. And that is my gift to you. Until next week, I wish you all the best. And remember, this month is Mental Health Month. If there is anything that I can help you with, or someone that you know, by all means, give me a call. Is it a time for us to heal within? This is Lisa. God bless you. And may the universal light surround you. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.